Hey guys, coming to you live from Ohio, which is always a pretty cool thing. As always, I always have my in-ear headphones just to kind of monitor how the sound and video are matching up. And so far, it looks kind of good. But no, no Superman pajamas. And I thought about it, but then I thought to myself, no, that would just be a little too weird because I, I do have some footy pajamas I could put on, but I decided not to this time. If I sound a little hoarse or I'm kind of coughing a little bit, I had a canceled trip. And I just have the worst luck, I think, when it comes to trips and being sick. I don't know what it is. Like, I think my body knows when I'm going to be ill. Uh, sorry, when I'm going on a trip. So that it knows that to be ill. Um, but if you remember from, let's say, I think it was last weekend, I was supposed to, no, not not this past weekend, two weekends ago, supposed to make a trip to the Smokies. And the plan at that point was to uh, kind of hike up, uh, what was it, not Low Gap Trail, but ice, to stay in Ice Water Springs on the AT um, in the Smokies and then do kind of a day hike up to Mount LeConte, back down, kind of slack pack a little bit, and that was definitely going to be the plan. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. I got sick, and so I spent most of that weekend kind of in bed with fever and chills, and I ugh, just, I hate that. I hate that feeling of knowing that you have a trip all planned, everything set up, I'm all packed. I'm ready to go when I get sick. And this is maybe the second or third time it's happened to me. And it just so happens, I think because I probably go more frequently than most people. So I'm kind of bound to have it happen. Uh, but it's still really frustrating. I know what happens because you, you pull together an entire plan. You pull together a group. And then you have to back out. And unfortunately, in this case, that's what I ended up doing. Um, I decided uh, not to push it and be dumb and just go anyway, which was probably a good thing with how I felt that Saturday. Um, so it, it is what it is. But let's see. Questions about footy pajamas. Um, there is a meetup, by the way, if you guys have an in Ohio, if you're in Ohio, there's a meetup at uh, Mohican State Park. I think it's campsite number nine, I think is where they're planning on doing it. Uh, it's mostly hammock hangers, but tent and ground dwellers are welcome, of course. Um, and I think Meerkat Hiking, you could put the link in the description, maybe to the Facebook group, um, but it's being organized, I think, by Ohio Hammock Hangers or Hammock Forms. you got to remind me which one. So August Hawk just said he came back from a four-day trip with the youngins. Temps, temps in the high 30s, 7-year-old did great in his own hammock. Cool. And new hammock gear, duck down, burrow, econ, top quilt. And those things are awesome. And just a reminder, if you're looking for uh, a deal on top quilts, um, especially locally made ones. Black Friday is a time that cottage industries really go out of their way to kind of make some deals and get uh, kind of put some discounts out there. And so I know for sure hammock gear, people are waiting for hammock gear to kind of have their um, top quilts made. Uh, Enlightened Equipment has some deals, not as strong as, as I've seen in the past. Um, you know, 
well, I guess I don't know until it, what, until it happens. Um, Warbonnet always has Black Friday deals at UGQ. And I know people mentioned uh, Loco Libre in the last stream. And there'd be another good uh, cottage industry vendor to kind of go with if you're looking for a quilt. But now is the time. Like, this is the lowest I've ever seen it in terms of um, econ quilts and duck down. The price of down has really dropped. And so if you're really looking for a quality piece of gear, now is the time to do it. Don't wait. Um, this Black Friday, go ahead and make an order. Uh, let's see. What do you think about hiking in Checo or Teva similar? So Benjamin Denley is asking about hiking in kind of sandals, having wide feet and have problems hiding, finding shoes that fit well. Can you recommend a wide shoe if you have any experience? Um, yeah, Benjamin, I, I, in terms of having wider feet, I would suggest the Keens. They tend to have a really wide foot box and people who have wider feet and um, have issues with their toes kind of feeling squished together. I would suggest the Keens. Um, I know Evan from Evan's backpacking videos, and he's the one who actually, the, the music that you were listening to before, um, he was the one he, uh, who kind of created that music, but he also hikes in sandals now more recently. If you watch his videos, you'll see he's making that transition. Uh, I I probably personally wouldn't do it. Um, I guess I've, I've never tried it, so I can't knock it too much, um, but I haven't had an experience hiking in sandals. And yes, it's because I have kids and I work in a school, Benjamin. Um, so I kind of get a double whammy. I get my kids' own germs, and usually they they get it, and sometimes they pass it on to me. Or if I don't get it that way, I get it through my uh, students at school. So that that always is is something I have to consider. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Ultras, um, I think, is another good brand, and Release Outdoors mentioned that in the chat. And I know Subaru Josh uses the Ultra 3.0s, I believe, and he he likes it um, a lot. The, the thing you have to remember with the Ultras, at least the ones he has, is since it has a zero drop, sometimes it may affect how you're um, hiking. And zero drop, you're talking about kind of a, a flat overall shoe. And so the Solomons, for example, you, they have a bit of a heel to them. Most of our shoes do. And you're kind of used to walking that way and hiking that way. So some people have an adjustment period with that zero drop. And so just keep in mind with the ultras, at least the 3.0s, you may have that um, issue. August Hawk is talking about um, Solomon boots. And I, actually, you know, people usually say a Solomon is for more narrower, uh, is for narrower feet. And I find that to be the case. And when I first put on my Solomon uh, Speed Cross 3s, that's what I thought is that there's no way that these things are going to fit me properly. Um, but honestly, they work really well for me. And I, I'm surprised they, they have. Um, but I, I'm glad they have. And so, uh, Valise is talking about Enlightened Equipment made a good deal, you know, in uh, on Black Fridays. So Carlson's talking about that snake skin for a tarp using a shower loofah. And that, Carlson, is probably one of my favorite videos. And it doesn't get a whole lot of traction. Like, it, it got a little bit when it first got released. Um, but it hasn't got any, you know, significant amount of views for a while. But that's probably one of my favorite videos or favorite hacks. Uh, I just think it's it's really cool that a loofah can be used that way and how cheap it is. And uh, Josh, Super Josh, has used his for a long time. The only thing is, sometimes you may have to replace it. So you know what to do. You have to spend another dollar on a loofah, and you have to be careful with it running because it can it can uh, kind of like. Uh, not that I would know, but women's pantyhose in general, once you get a run in it, it can, you know, keeps going. Same thing with the loofah. If it starts ripping, it's going to kind of go all the way. So just be careful. Uh, let's see. Arcana said he just ordered a UGQ Bandit. I figure their prices are so low now. Why wait for Black Friday? True. Yeah, the prices are pretty low. Hey, Bob. Meerkat Hiking is talking about, uh, let's see... The meetup that is going to happen in uh, Mohican State Park. I can't make it, um, but there's a meetup this Saturday at Site 10 and probably S Site 9 um, if the turnout is what they expect. And so check out the on hammock forms and the Ohio Hammock Hangers. So if you search Ohio Hammock Hangers in Facebook, I'm a member of that group, Meerkat Hiking, um, Alex's as well, um, and a bunch of other guys that you may know from YouTube and Facebook in general are on there. And it's just kind of a, a cool group, more localized, of course, um, but it's a good one to, 
to check out. And of course, if you haven't liked my page on Facebook, that's a plug to go ahead and do that. That's one way I message back and forth quite frequently um, with people on there. Um, and it gives you a chance to see. If you don't have Instagram, I kind of put my, my uh, photos onto uh, Facebook that way. Uh, yep, Keens are great for... Uh, I have great mustache jeans. That is true. I'm not sure. Um, I had a grandfather who had a, a, a pretty good mustache, but yeah, thanks. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> Using the Ultra Lone Peak 3.0 and had to go up a size from the 2.5. Salma's coming out wide versions of Supercross and Quest boots. Oh, that's good to know, Al Gray. Uh, but you've got a lot of compliments on your... Uh, your loofah, that is awesome to see. Uh, thanks for the credit. I didn't I didn't come up with the original idea. I just kind of saw it, I think, at some point a while ago on hammock forums. I thought, why isn't there a video on that? I, I found one after a lot of searching that there was one kind of a more obscure video. He just didn't, it didn't search very well. Um, and so that's why I decided to cre create my own. I gave that original guy credit. I'm sure he's not the original guy who did it either. Um, it's just one of those kind of common knowledge things that a lot of people... Um, no, um, but for some reason, people haven't necessarily done a dedicated video on it. Hey, Mike. So I kind of already talked about the, the meetup that's happening here in Ohio. And so if you if you want to swing by and check that out, you're more than welcome to if you're local. If not, you can still travel. It's supposed to be wet this weekend. Um, I talked about kind of quilts already, and there are a bunch of sales going on. So be sure to check those out. Um, Black Friday especially, they're going to be really, really good. And so I'm actually keeping my eye out and maybe I'll pull the trigger on a uh, zero degree econ quote. I just, for some reason, my uh, gear jeans are calling to me and saying, you know, you need to do this. You need to do this. Okay. So in terms of conversation and questions we had from this last uh, two weeks, it's been, I think this, this pace seems to be about right for the chat. I think people get, uh, if it's every week, I think people kind of get burnt out of it. It just kind of gets annoying. Um, but every other week I think is, is a good pacing let me know what you think in the chat below but some questions about the marlin spike hitch um, that i use and you know people were asking if i use that for tent stakes at all i know there was a question on that and the answer to that is no i actually use the clove hitch which i think to me it's a little bit more secure for tent stakes um, i think the marlin spike hitch is great don't get me wrong when i'm using it as a as a toggle um, or using my beaner um, in the spike hitch but I find that uh, because it, you know, it's one of the key things for the Marlin Spike Hitch is how how easily it uh, loosens up. And so you just pull the toggle out and it just kind of falls apart. And so that's the thing that stops me from using it um, in my tent stake. Could it work? Yeah, it could work fine. Um, but I tend to use the clove hitch uh, more. And so Arcana is asking about if the Joshes uh, went on the trip without me. Actually, it, the whole thing... <laughs> And I blame Subaru Josh. When he watches this, he's going to say, yep, it's true. Is that maybe, uh, remember I was talking about Dolly Sods and maybe I'm being cursed um, and that trip was cursed. I think it's every trip that Subaru Josh decides that he's going to plan. Because so far, we actually have never gone on a trip that you've seen where I haven't been the one involved in the planning. Uh, every trip that you've seen so far, I've been the one to kind of talk about maps, kind of figure out mileage, camp, where we're going to stop, water sources. And so I kind of know uh, the whole trip backwards and forwards. Super Josh, every time he has planned it, we actually have not gone. <laughs> so this last trip to the Smokies, this was his baby. He was going to plan it. He was going to organize it. And unfortunately, when I kind of got sick, something there was some child care that fell, fell apart for... Um, karate josh so he couldn't make it as well he had to stay home and watch his kid um and then so we were kind of telling super josh and there were two other guys who were going to come with us as well and some um by some streak of awful luck um one of them had to kind of work um a longer shift uh, pick up like 24 hours straight of absolute working another one had an opportunity uh with a lady friend and he opted out and bowed out and so it became Subaru Josh by himself and I felt awful for that because that's awful when it just falls apart like that and it happened really quickly within a couple um, hours of each other all this stuff kind of happened and I felt awful and I'm still kind of sick now two weeks almost two weeks later and it's awful um, but I'm kind of getting over it feeling a little better uh, felt good enough to kind of live stream filmed a little bit and um, that's actually why the video this past week was so short and so sweet 
is because I just felt terrible uh, when I was filming. I just want to make sure I get one out. And so if you see a, a shorter video like that, that means I just was not up to talking. Uh, let's see. So to answer that question the long way around, Subaru Josh did not go by himself. And actually, that's one of the things we kind of tell him. We should definitely go on your solo trip. I mean, it's still a, a definitely doable trip. Um, but for him, it, you know, the cost of the trip increases when you don't have as many people splitting gas, especially when you're driving to the Smokies. And so those considerations, he decided not to go. Uh, let's see. Looking to get a new hammock for next year, Carlson Adventure says. Thinking about the Dutch half-wit, any recommendations? I always recommend the Dream Hammock Darien. That is my number one go-to. Uh, my issue with the uh, the Dutch half wit, honestly, Carlson, is I don't feel like the the half a bug net is worth the weight savings. And so let me explain myself: is that I think you you will miss uh, the full uh, at least in the other three seasons. In winter, of course, it doesn't matter as much uh, at all. But the three seasons, you will miss having the full bug net. And ask uh, Bob. Up to 71 in the chat about his half wit and what he thinks about it. It's a great hammock, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think the functionality of having that half net, I honestly, I think it's kind of pointless. But um, I guess some people like it. Um, it saves them a little bit of weight. But a Dream Hammock Darien, I don't think it's too much more weight um, than the half wit. And I think the functionality of that full bug net is worth it. Uh, hey, Marvin. Hey, Tom made it to a live stream. Hey, buddy. Uh, Josh can't plan because he doesn't have a mustache. You know, he, not only does he not have a mustache, <laughs> bleep, bleep, Ohio, um, he also can't grow much of a beard. I, you know, I'm calling him out right here on the live stream. Maybe he will come on. I'm not sure. But the, the big, I always make fun of him after being in the trail for a couple days. You know, we uh, men, <laughs> Karate Josh and I, tend to have more of a fuller beard and definitely need to shave and super josh because he's the baby of the group will say something like oh yeah yeah i need to shave as well and we're like what exactly will you be shaving <laughs> uh benjamin is talking about how he's always the one to do logistics on trips i wish someone else would do it and i would just tag along and actually i thought that too benjamin but i I feel like I, I'm too much of a control freak when it comes to trips. I like to know like where I'm going. I like to know um, where water sources are. I like to be the one kind of managing that. Um, it takes a lot for me to just kind of let that go. And so the, it's funny, the last two times that we've had Josh uh, possibly plan those trips is that it just fell through uh, because I thought maybe, hey, I'll just go ahead and relax and not, not worry about it. But something where it just it just did not happen. So we'll see we'll see what happens in the future. We'll see what happens in the future if we can get to do that or not. Uh, yep. Uh, if you're in the chat and check out Bob Uptrail seventy one, he has great pictured rocks videos and pictures. I mean, sorry, um, backpacking hiking trips in Michigan and the Smokies, and he's been all over as well. He's he was out west last year, I believe. And so go ahead and check him out um, because he, you know, he's one of those channels. If you search any hiking picture to rocks or Michigan, he's the one that comes up. Great American Survival got the Dutch um, wear chameleon, which is awesome. That's another great hammock. Once again, there's nothing against Dutch. I think he makes great stuff. Um, I just I happen to like Dream Hammock, and I like the Dream Hammock Raven. I think the chameleon does some things that are. Are great i think the raven and the sparrow i i feel like dream hammock hammock has their entire line and they're not a sponsor or anything by the way i'm not not competent in any way to say dream hammock is awesome but they just are and they do a nice job steven c i have a cheap winter outfitters hammock from amazon i'm pretty new to this would it be crazy to try and camp a night in, in, in it and the answer is no i would definitely go ahead and try to camp a night on, in it it depends where you're camping now that hammock um, and depends as well if you have proper under insulation so steven i'm assuming you probably if since you're new to it you probably just have a camping pad um, just make sure you have proper under insulation and top insulation as well um, you cannot well not you cannot you'll be pretty uncomfortable if you try to sleep in a hammock without under insulation um, where i would try first is either your backyard 
or a local uh, state park or a municipal park. Uh, that's where I do a lot of my practice, and people are always surprised when I say that, but I have a local one nearby within 10 minutes, and if there's any camping trips or when I'm prepping, trying out new gear, before I actually try it out on the trail, I actually will go to those local parks and try it out there. Any experience with hammock socks? Thinking about picking one up for the winter. This is Razor Guy in the chat. And yes, actually, just none personally, but I've seen Subaru Josh use his uh, Argon hammock sock. Uh, it's kind of as, uh, I believe, so you can kind of flip it around so you can either have a bug net or you can kind of have the fabric on, on top. I think they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> I would much rather have, when I've had a hammock top cover, um, that's better. But honestly, I find that you don't really need a cover at all. Um, but hammock socks work, but I think they're a, a great option if you don't want to spend the additional money for a hammock top cover. Yeah, that is a long car ride from Ohio to North Carolina, uh, and, and he didn't want to do that, especially by himself. Do I recommend any single person tents? And that's a great question. Um, the one tent that I was looking at for a long time is the REI Quarter Dome um, or the REI Half Dome. I'm not much of a tent guy, Stephen, to be honest, um, but those two are the ones I was looking at, especially when I was thinking about heading out to do more out west trips. Luckily, my hammock worked with the most recent out, out west trip, um, but those were the two that I definitely was gonna look into um, more. Also, um, be sure if you want really super lightweight, check out the uh, Z-Pax Duplex or Solplex. Solplex. Um, those are really lightweight options. To me, the, the Solplex is a little too small just from what I've seen, um, but the Duplex seems like it's, it could be just about right. Shalisa does not have a mustache. Uh, a bit off topic, but will you ever do a video on medical supplied supplies and emergency planning. I probably will do a video on my first aid kit at some point. I think I did uh, a video a while ago about my top three items in my first aid kit, but I never went through the entire kit. And yes, there is burn cream in there. I don't remember who who has mentioned that a couple times to me, but there is burn cream in my first aid kit. Um, emergency planning, um, probably not, but probably med my first aid kit, I'll go over at some point. <laughs> Not everyone drinks maple syrup like you, Ramoth Thorn. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, I bear a striking resemblance to uh, uh, Team Ramrod from Super Troopers. That's why all the mustache comments and the maple syrup comments in the chat. Razor Guy, if you get a sock, get the new Dutchware one with a zipper on the side. Yes, uh, I think that's a very good option. Arkan has brought up about the, the sock because that, that really is the pain in the butt. Um, crawling to the top of your hammock, get it open is just an issue and I, that's why i remember watching subaru josh struggle the one with the zipper that makes a lot of sense uh if you look for uh dutch's channel on youtube i think it's uh thomas wrestler or tom wrestler um you'll see he kind of in his own kind of very concise way it goes over kind of the functions of his new gear and he releases those um every once in a while whenever he has a, a new product out Oh, let's see. Uptrail71 is talking about that full uh, bug net coverage better on hot, humid nights. Yep, the halfway is good in most cases, but that I like having the protection of a full a full bug net. net. Uh, do you have any warmth? In terms of your, I'll let him. Uh, I'll let him answer as well. Um, it, it blocks some winds and it adds a little bit of warmth, but not a whole lot. Um, so, for example, a hammock top cover may add about five degrees more of warmth, at least when I've tried it in the winter. Uh, well, very early spring, I guess is the way you should put it. I haven't done any winter camping in, in a hammock with a, a top net. But you also have to worry more about condensation sometimes. Um, so just keep in mind, that's why some people have like a, a frost bib. Hey, Restless. Hey, Alex, Summer Sock uses a bug net, uh, good zero. The RI Quarter Dome is a very solid one-person tent for value versus weight. The Tarp Tent Moment is an amazing one-person tent as well. And it's funny you mentioned Tarp Tent, uh, Tom. I actually still looking at tents more for family. I'm talking about three-person, still looking at that Rain Shadow, and I really have my eye on that Rain Shadow too. Um, I contacted Tarp Tent, 
and they should be coming out with a new Rain Shadow 2 version. Um, so it'll probably be Rain Shadow 3 in 2018, early 2018. So I'm kind of waiting out for that, holding out for that, um, because I really like the design. It's fairly lightweight, and it should be a good, more kind of family backpacking tent um, that I'll be able to take with me. So I'm thinking about that as well. Uh, hey, Kenny from Ugly Tent is talking about the MSR Hubba as a good single person tent. Lots of good options here. MSR Velocity 1, lightweight, less than $200. And so that's great. Uh, there's a lot, lot of good options here in the chat. Antipas is talking about the Eno Double Nest and Rainfly tarp hasn't filled me yet. Yep, you definitely can use that. And so, you know, I don't want to say that that, that a kind of uh, more generally manufactured like the Eno or Winter Outfitters or those sort of hammocks will not work. They work just as fine. I remember when we first got started kind of getting more into hammocks and more into backpacking. Uh, Karate Josh had an Eno for a long time. He still has an Eno top quilt that he uses. Um, he just kind of has an, had an Eno dime. Those kind of stuff will work. You work with what you have um, and it's fine for its purposes. Stephen C is asking again about oh, about permission to camp at a state park in a hammock. Usually, if it's not uh, disallowed in their rules or regulations anyway, um, to to hammock camp, I don't make an issue of it. Make sure that you use uh, at least one in Ohio. I'm talking about because Florida, for example, I know has rules about a two inch uh, wide webbing, I believe. Um, but in Ohio, I'd use like an, an inch inch and a half webbing make sure you're not using a rope on the trees um, uh, of course leave no trays try to make sure that you um, don't damage the trees and I think everything will be fine you don't need specific permission for a hammock of course it, it will depend on the area that you're in but in general camp away I haven't had anyone ever confront me or say what are you doing more people are interested in it more people will stop and say are you sleeping in a hammock tonight or are you doing this or that and I've never had an issue uh, Meerkat hiking. I had to get me a tent if I want some great views walking above the tree line. Yeah, it, that that is the thing with the um, the tent is that you know you you can especially at West. We did pass up some um, kind of epic camping spots, but to me the you know of course the um, I wanted to make sure I was kind of sleeping lower than that anyway. So to me it wasn't a huge loss. But there are some good views you can get with the tent and some cool. Uh, campsites where you just look out and you see, you know, whole mountain ranges. So that's awesome. Uh, Tom's talking about the Rain Shadow 2. I think it's actually a three-person tent. I'm not sure why they, I, I think they call it the 2 because that's the version, uh, but it's a three-person tent. And so it look, looked really cool, especially, I think, for, for kids and lots of good coverage. So uh, Bob is talking about last winter in January, the full net did help cut on some of the wind and the blowing snow. I still don't use the winter sock. And yeah, I, I actually had a top cover for my XLC for a while. I actually didn't find it, uh, you know, especially especially in, in winter weather or more inclement weather, you tend to put the tarp down closer to the hammock anyway, and you have the bug net that cuts down some of the wind. And so I didn't find it was super useful to have a top cover. Uh, some people like it because it adds the, the warmth and a little bit more coverage and protection. But it is what it is. Uh, Sleeves is talking about the Marmot one person. I have never tried that one, but like like most tents. Yukon Outfitters makes great start hammocks for the last four years. Even ones with bug nets and the newer ones have straps and buckles. Yeah, so lots of lots of good people out there, especially if you're talking about uh, mass market stuff. There's lots of good hammocks out there, lots of cheap hammocks. You don't um, have to spend a whole lot of money to get into hammock camping. But if you want to get lighter and you want to get more custom, then it is going to cost a little more money. And so that's why if you're talking about a cottage vendor, Dream Hammock is the way to go, I think. Uh, questions, and one that came up as well during the week is, if you remember watching my Marlin Spike uh, video, Marlin Spike Hitch, talking about the carabiner as a toggle. And so I didn't say it in the video, but I said it in my uh, kind of hammock setup video. I was, you know, shook with the old adage, you know, Hang on the knot, not on the toggle. Hang on the knot, not on the toggle. Because you want to make sure you don't actually hang on that toggle. Because someone commented and said that um, not to use the carabiner that way. 
And my response is, I've actually never seen anything about you know, the carabiner breaking um, because you're hanging primarily on the knot. And so the carabiner actually has a lot less stress. And it's more for my peace of mind having the carabiner there because you can use literally a stick, <laughs> which is not rated for much weight at all. You can just put a stick in there. And as long as you hang on the knot, uh, you'll be fine. Um, granted, there is a possibility of you falling if you use a, a very dry stick or a stick that's not um, big enough. But in most cases, you won't have a problem with it at all. And so using the carabiner uh, as a toggle, some people um, use actual metal toggles or I've seen carbon toggles, I believe, as well. And so as long as you're hanging on the knot, um, you shouldn't put a whole lot of pressure or weight on the toggle itself and you'll be fine. No problems or issues. Um, and then there was a bunch of questions on that. Remember the Z-Pax polls and the Cascade Mountain Tech polls comparison? And so uh, kind of a lot of questions about the CMT quality. And it wasn't bad quality um, at all. I know I talked about fit and finish a little bit and the play. But it just makes sense to me why it it is a, a good value budget poll. Um, but things aren't perfect with it. Um, either like most polls like you saw there was a bunch of play in the polls even when locked down and I tried it again and it still wouldn't lock down all the way um, so just some things to consider um, you know if you want to bump up out of that budget category to um, Z-Pax polls or Black Diamond polls or even some Lecky polls as well so that's a good idea Great American Survival with some good advice don't hang higher than you want to fall that is very true um, also about polls as well, tracking polls, some people commented and mentioned that they actually make some polls out there that have an aluminum um, lower shaft. And so even though the top part of the polls, the, the two top parts may be made of um, carbon, um, the lower shaft tends to be aluminum. Um, so yeah. Uh, need to show off your new flare, show us your new shirt. Why no poop travel, Tim? Haha, <laughs> we deserve an answer. And so I did a very soft launch um, because I, I'm not sure. I'm trying to get my ducks in a row. I did a very soft launch of a t-shirt. I'm actually wearing it now um, of Tim Watson Outdoors, uh, the logo on the shirt, as well as um, what is it, the Go See Something Awesome. And then the standalone logo, if you didn't want any words on there at all. And so I'll show you guys with a shirt. Let me step back so you can see. Don't worry. This is, this is YouTube friendly. But... But yeah, so this is this is the shirt, and it's too cold in here to 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 uh, it's too cold in here to to go without the sweatshirt. But I I was really pleased with how they turned out. Uh, Amazon did a nice job printing them, and the nice thing is that most people have Amazon anyway. And if you want to take it back for a free return, it doesn't hurt me my feelings any. And if it doesn't fit you, you can send it back. There's no inventory to keep, and so you can just order if you like them. And uh, I will, though, ask him about the poop trowel shirt. There will be a poop trowel t-shirt coming up. I don't know when. I have to get designed together. The t-shirt links are in the description of the video, um, by the way. So feel free. It's up to you. There's no campaign. That's something I also want to avoid is like a Teespring campaign. I just didn't want something that um, I had to kind of gear up for and make a dedicated video for. The links are in the description, so be sure to check them out. Um, you have a bunch of options. But if you want a poop trowel t-shirt, they're coming. They're coming. I promise you that. I just have to work on design and kind of getting things together. And I have a couple of good designs that I think you guys will love. <laughs> um, so there's your answer. Uh, yeah, it was a very soft launch. I just mentioned it at the end of the video. So maybe at some point... Um, I will um, do a more of a, a designated video or an upload. Um, but till then, feel free. The, the links for the shirts will be in the description below. Let's see. Nate Bush is asking, where two inch straps are required? Does the whole strap have to be two inches? I've seen where people put foam or a bicycle tire tube between the tree and a one inch strap. Is that considered legal method? I think so, Nate. I think it depends on where you are. And so when I've seen people actually do straps more out west, uh, I don't think the whole thing has to be two inches. I just think where it contacts with a tree has to be two inches. Someone who's from Florida can correct me if I'm wrong. And I have seen that same thing where someone puts foam or uh, kind of a, a strap protector on the tree. 
Um, I think that's considered legal um, because it helps, uh, you know, not make as many marks around the tree. So Ugly Tent is talking about a cheap pair of aluminum trekking poles from Walmart for 10 years. I've used them every trip. Yeah, I think you can you can easily get away uh, with, I think uh, they call themselves, oh, what's the word? Walmart brand stuff is outdoor something. Same thing with their... Uh, with their dry bags. They have a bunch, that's their kind of brand. And so you have to be sure to, to check that out. <laughs> I don't know what, oh, great American survival. You just, you just got yourself dinged by the automatic sensor, I think. <laughs> um, I think that's what happened. It says message retracted. I don't know what happened there. Outdoor products. Here we go. Kenny's got it. Outdoor products is the name of it. Um, but they have a lot of good brands. And Ozark Trail especially. I tell people don't sleep on Walmart stuff. Like if you really want to try things out. And they have gotten a lot better than people think. I know people kind of poo-poo them. But I think there are some good things. And I still take a stroll through the, the outdoor aisle um, in Walmart. Just to check them out and see what there is. <laughs> so Adam, yes, that is design is coming. I'm going to guess a month or two. Um, for that t-shirt, I probably will do a, a dedicated upload in the hard launch because I think people will like that one. Kenny shirt uh, stuff is in the description. So be sure to check it out if you'd like them. And they have lots of good sizes. And once again, free returns. I'm not keeping any inventory. Of course, that is an affiliate thing. So I do thank you for supporting the channel because you're by buying that shirt. I do get a little chunk of that. I think like five bucks. I have to go ahead, go back and check. Um, but yeah, Ozark Trail is another one, but Outdoor Products is another um, brand that they have. Other questions that we have. Um, one big one that I had, I guess, and those of you guys who are more into winter camping, help, help me out. Winter camping and winter uh, backpacking. But one of the big questions I had is your hiking pace in winter. That's talking about um, snow. Like if you, let's say there's snow on the trails. I don't know, like let's say an inch or two of, 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 of snow on the trails. That's completely unbroken. You have to break the trail yourself. Um, how much does your hiking pace drop? Because, you know, one of the areas that I'm thinking about going is Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail. And I'd love to do the whole thing, but I'm thinking that maybe we can't if we're trekking through snow. You know, a typical um, pace for us, depending on what we're doing, if we're filming or taking tons of pictures, is about three miles per hour if we're really kind of going a decent clip. And so how much um, do should I expect my pace to drop? Or how much has your pace dropped? Those of you guys who... Um, winter <laughs> winter hike done yeah i know 33 minutes right we made it that long without talking about poop trowels <laughs> and then adam adam had from restless outdoors had to bring it up <laughs> um but yeah how much does your hiking pace drop that's kind of my question is that because I, I know it's not reasonable to expect that we can just book the same amount of miles as we do three seasons long um, I know that we're going to hike a little slower. I'm probably going to have boots on instead of trail runners, which means I'm going to get slowed down a little bit. Um, but also, if we're breaking trail, what do you guys think about winter? And so, up trail says it drops to about half for winter, so one and a half miles per hour. And so, Arcana says it depends on if there's snow or not, um, which I guess makes sense. Um, but if we're talking like... Um, I guess I was thinking a couple of inches of snow, so it drops a lot. So, so that to me that that means for me, if there's snow on the ground, that and um, LHHT through hike in the winter is probably not in the cards. We're probably just going to do a section of it, um, and that is going to be the big trip for January. Is the plan? I'm hoping for three to four days. Since I mo I missed this most recent trip, I managed to convince my wife to put the two trips together. <laughs> Sorry, I hit my microphone. The two trips together that I have planned, and so this should be pretty awesome. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, of course, December always gets taken up uh, with Christmas and um, shopping and family and church stuff, and so uh, I know December is definitely going to be out of the question, unless maybe later in December, but definitely in January is what's going to be. Uh, outdoors, Alex is saying it drops a lot, so much more work. It's the traction that's the issue. That's a good point. And now, now a question, and uh, I'll come back to it and circle back around. But what about snowshoes? 
Um, I guess it depends how much snow there is. And I've seen some winter backpacking or hiking uh, videos. We're probably going to start off pretty easy and just not do a whole lot of out in the elements camping. We're probably going to, if we're doing the LHHT, kind of stop at shelters for sure instead of campsites. And so that's what we're going to end up um, doing. Jay wonders out the places I've gone winter backpacking. It really didn't slow me down much, except when I didn't have micro spikes with me. And I do have micro spikes. Uh, what about snowshoes is my question as well. Other than that, trying to stay on trail would be, be the big thing. And I agree. That's the one thing that we're um, keeping in mind is since that we're more uh, novice winter backpackers. And, you know, we did some winter camping, but not a whole lot. Um, we want to make sure that we um, stay on the trail is the big one. Do a comedy video on proper pooping etiquette. <laughs> that has been done. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of those. And so it wouldn't be anything new. I think for right now, we'll probably stick on, uh, well, I guess never say never. We'll probably stick to, um, what you call it, the poop trowels or camping trowels because that, uh, that seems to be a niche that I fit into really well. I don't know why. I just kind of fell into it. Um, maybe at some point we'll talk about poop, pooping etiquette, especially the thing that bugs me. I know Adam, who was just out at Hans's Point in Red River Gorge, was talking about it. If you head out to Hans's Point, there's a ton of toilet paper everywhere over there. It's it's the most frustrating thing to see. Um, so that's a big one. What I always think is interesting and complete sidebar, um, talking about pooping, is the different positions that people contort themselves into because they can't just do a typical squat. So it is what it is. I don't have an issue if that tells you anything about my method. <laughs> hey, Katana. Extra weight of winter gear seems easier to carry when it's cold. Don't expect to hike three miles per hour on the LHHD. More like one mile per hour of snow. Maybe a whole day. Brutal. Oh, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that, Adam. Um, especially, I'm hoping with the um, LHHT um, that I'm going to be... You know, the thing I really enjoy is their shelter system and especially, hopefully, keep your fingers crossed that they'll have wood there. Um, I'm hoping that. Uh, do I plan to drop some beats and bust rhymes in the video? I do not. <laughs> you guys have heard me sing in a video before. My, usually, it, it tends to be in... I haven't done it for a little while. Um, probably because I haven't been back to the Smokies for a little while. That just um, inspires me to sing usually. You've seen it usually at the end of my videos. I'll toss it on there. But hymns are my thing if I'm going to sing in a video. Uh, remember, you may still need sunscreen for winter. Very good tip. A couple inches doesn't, of snow doesn't slow me down. If it's an icy, slippery conditions are the issue. Also, big thing in the winter is less hours of sunlight. Good point, Nate. Went to RRG last year in six inches of snow, and it took eight hours to do 10 miles. This is Nate, and I was beat and asleep by 7 p.m. Normally do two and a half to three miles per hour. Yeah, I... I believe in six inches of snow, but that I bet that was an epic trip. I think that was an, uh, an awesome one for sure. SGR Outdoors. Yes, I have some winter hikes planned. This is what we're talking about. It's the uh, Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail in Pennsylvania. Planning on doing this section of that. Um, not going to be hammock camping. Going to be staying in their shelter system. And that's going to be, I think, really, really awesome. Looking forward to that trip. And Adam is telling me to leave the comedy to him. <laughs> and let me tell you, you your, your videos, if you check out Restless Outdoors here in the chat, uh, be sure to check him out because he is hilarious. His edits and his songs and the comments between those guys are hilarious. Adam, let me tell you, your most recent video where I think your friend Tim was saying something serious. He was kind of talking, kind of looking off into the, um, the open area and talking about how he loves being outdoors or he was just kind of making, he was having a moment and you kind of interrupted him and said, you know, I just kind of wanted a snippet of how things are going. I died laughing. <laughs> so that was awesome. Uh, Jay wonders out, what do you do when the ground is frozen and you can't dig a hole? Ooh, now that is a good question. Something I have not um, considered thought about. I always thought, I guess, if the, the ground is frozen, I'd probably chip at it. <laughs> Um, or in a case like that, I'd probably have to talk, talk about considering a wag bag um, if it was uh, uh, something that I'd have to come with me. I'd have to pack it out. It's just what needs to be done. Uh, Benjamin Denley is talking about Hanson's Point is used up. Cloud splitter most places in ROG. And it's unfortunate. That area is gorgeous, Benjamin. Um, but I just kind of hate sometimes 
if it gets overused and um, people kind of abuse it, especially with the um, um, the amount of people who are um, just not taking care of the area. That, that's also the last thing I'll say about it. Tom's talking about vloggers need to spread the word on using a trowel. There are a few pros on YouTube who are telling noobs, new people to, to leave the trowel at home. I, yeah, I do think that's a mistake too. And it's good to see. I know Darwin recently switched his um, loadout just so he started telling people uh, to bring your trowel because he didn't bring one for a long time. Um, and so he started to do that now. So I think that's really important. And part of that, you know, I make a joke about poop trowels, but part of it is LNT and for encouraging people to use them. Uh, we winter camp on islands and hike in sand, sand will wear you out. Yes. <laughs> I know that Hanson's Point video that Adam has was hilarious. That really, really made me laugh. So we're going to close off here, guys. We've been running for about 48 minutes. And so I want to make sure that you guys enjoy your night. Thanks again for watching. Uh, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button if you like the video in the chat. Once again, we're not going to do it next Wednesday, probably the following Wednesday, which would be the Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Um, but also something to consider as well, if you would like a t-shirt, remember there are links in the description below. Be sure to check them out. And there is going to be a poop trowel shirt coming. I promise you that. Um, so thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for hanging out. Um, it's always fun to answer questions and interact this way. And it's also a good way for us to kind of... Um, talk about gear and discuss gear. I know Arcana mentioned that to me before, that he enjoys it more because getting different people's perspective on gear. And so you guys really make the chat and it's really, um, you make the stream and it's really awesome to see because you guys have lots of different ideas, a lot of different experiences than I have. And so it's awesome to talk about with you. So I love you guys, just so you know. <laughs> so happy Thanksgiving, guys. You guys enjoy the time with your family, eat a lot of turkey, Watch some football um, and have a good time.